When we put all the enzymes that we've learned in action together, DNA replication looks something like this. Helicase will begin separation of the parental DNA, single strand binding proteins stabilize the strands, and primase and polymerase will work their way down the strand to synthesize new DNA. To put all this detail into a bigger context, it's important to note that DNA strands aren't replicated from one end of the DNA to another in just one fell swoop. There are actually multiple sections of DNA being replicated at the same time within a strand. And as the DNA strands are separated by helicase, these, these bubble-like structures sort of form in the DNA, and they sort of, um, in a very simplified depiction, look like this. And so what's happening in one strand of replicating DNA, there will be several bubbles all along the strand, slowly growing as the enzymes work their way out in opposing directions. And the enzymes will start at the center, um, which is called the origin of replication, and um, start moving out in opposite directions along both strands. Eventually, all the bubbles will all join, completely separating the entire DNA double helix as synthesis of the new complementary strands are being completed. So this depiction here, this large depiction, um, is actually only a close-up view of one section of this bubble. Um, and this is known, this section and this section is known as the replication fork. So DNA replication involves some roles. It's not just as simple as these enzymes working together to make DNA strands. One of the biggest roles is that DNA will always um, and only be synthesized from the 5' prime to the 3' prime end. And this is not talking about the template strand. It's talking about the strand that's being synthesized at the moment. So for example, if we take a look at this strand, um, we can trace it back to here and we notice that this end is the 5 prime end so that means this end must be the 3 prime end and the 5 prime and 3 prime end are just referring to certain um, molecular um, complexities within the ends of the DNA molecules and um, you can see this arrow pointing here shows that the DNA strand is being synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime as we said but if you were to look at this strand it's similarly moving in this direction, but if we were to trace back the ends, this is the three prime end, and this is the five prime end. So how exactly is it being synthesized in this direction in a three prime to five prime end when we said that it can only be synthesized from five prime to three prime? Well, despite the DNA traveling from the in the opposite direction, 3' prime to 5', prime, there is actually a particular synthesis method that is, um, allows the DNA to achieve 5' prime to 3' prime synthesis. So the enzymes will synthesize DNA in sections from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. So for example, um, DNA polymerase will synthesize this section here, and then it'll skip over a section of DNA and start here and then work backwards. And so now notice when you're working backwards, you're going from the five prime to three prime end. And these little DNA fragments are called um, Okazaki fragments because they were discovered by a Japanese scientist of the same name. And so that means um, if you were to look at this bubble here for the overall picture, um, it let's label this is the 5 prime end, this is the 3 prime end, and this is the 3 prime end, the 5 prime end. Um, down here, it's being synthesized, the DNA is being synthesized smoothly because it's 5 prime to 3 prime. And up here, again, it's 5 prime to 3 prime, so it's synthesizing smoothly. But up here, it's sort of synthesized like this, in little chunks. And over here, the same, it's being synthesized like this in little chunks. The strand that's synthesized through Okazaki fragments is known as the lagging strand um, because it's always slightly slower than the other strand, lagging spelled like this. And the other strand is called the leading strand, which smoothly synthesizes, synthesizes from the 5' to the 3'.